So we got our box beams done. Structural lumber all delivered to site now. We're ready to roll. So we finished drilling a bunch of these half inch galvanized bolts in, um, lopping off the tops, creating a nice flat surface. And uh, my son Nate seems to think he knows what he's doing. He's going to give us all a lesson on how to drill a hole. Um, so the best way to do it is just to go perpendicular. And with the, this type of drill, because we're drilling so much, you want to go an inch into the bit and then bring it back out and then back in and out. And you just keep on going until you're all the way through. Go ahead. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This might seem like it takes a little bit of extra time. It might be arduous. But it's a, a $30 drill bit, which is exactly the same size as our galvanized bolt. And if you go too fast, it'll shear right in half from overheating. That's why it's necessary to take it in and out and clean the wood out of the out of that bit as you go. Okay. It looks so majestic. <laughs> it's my job to make it look easy. <laughs> awesome. Important to note, I've seen a lot of guys mention a lot of different hardware. The reality is, is that drill bit with this nut, or sorry, nut and bolt, it is an exact fit. You have to hammer the bolt through the hole. That means it's a direct load transfer. And when we've got these boards leveled off with the screws, they're not going to move around because we've been no extra space for that to happen. So the last thing to do to have our box beams all finished off is to lop off the top of the 4 by 4 posts. Once we get our nuts and bolts all attached, the key here is you want to have the pedal area pushed against the wood. That reduces the vibration of the tool, so I'm not bouncing around. The blade should be longer than what you're actually cutting. You just rest them gently on the two pieces of wood, and then we turn it on and give it a rocking motion back and forth. I've found that that's most effective to keep it cutting in a straight line. The last step for this is really we want to tighten these nuts. We want to create as much compression as we can so that things aren't moving around. And, whoops, lefty loosey, righty tighty, isn't that what we always say, Max? Now, we're dealing with a, a softwood lumber here. So although that feels pretty tight, we're going to go for compressed. Takes a little bit of work. Whew. All right, so once you have everything tight and you're ready to start laying your floor joist package, um, with a triple box beam like this, we're using the middle beam as kind of our midpoint. So we're going to be attaching our joists every 16 inches on center. The secret here is that we're going to offset the joists so that I can attach them to this ridge plate from each side and have one of these running down the middle. Now all of these joists will be sitting on one of these 2x10s, so that will transfer the load, which will work out really, really well. And then so all i got to do is just mark the outside of my 16 inch on center, put an X where the wood is attached. And that represents the outside of the board. Now, in decking, it's not as important to be dead on the money with this because of the way we attach our deck boards. Since we're using the camo system, you can't even see the screws. If you're having visible screws, you really want to be meticulous with this point because with surface screws, you really, part of the aesthetics of the deck is to have them all lined up perfectly. You almost want a chalk liner or use a straight edge or something like that. Now my tape has got these little red squares on it. Brilliant for framing because that red square is every 16 inches. I don't have to do math or anything like that. I just look for red square and mark it. And I'm good to go.
little note, when you're working with two by six, it's one fastener for every two inches of lumber in the number. So six divided by two is three fasteners. Make sure you do it, or when your inspector comes by, he won't pass you. So for this particular project, we're using the Sienna Brown pressure treated. They still have the green on the market in certain suppliers, but this one looks a lot more like cedar. Um, it starts off brown within a week or two of fading in the sun. You'll never know the difference. So now what we're doing, we're just getting all of our joists run. Once we have our joists run and the other rim joists on, we're gonna square it off to the building. Once that's squared off, and then we can start measuring out to where our ramp locations are and cut this lumber to size according to our schematic for building a ramp off of a platform over in that corner. Okay, so now that we've got our basic structure in place, we've got this side all screwed down, we got the corners pinned. We're not too concerned about what's going on over there because that's all gonna get custom cut. We're gonna change the angle. So we're just leaving it in place, resting on the beams for now. We're gonna have a little talk with the client. We'll map out the final design in a minute. What we have to do is get this all squared off before we can measure off the rest of the deck. Because the whole deck is built off the idea that we're coming square off the wall, right down the middle, on this box beam. So the way that we measure this off, believe it or not, Nate, Yo. I need you to get in between these two joists at about, let's say, eight feet down. All right, basic triangle law. If I go three feet over and make a mark, okay. all right, behind you. Okay. Yeah, okay. Hang on, we'll go six. Okay. So basic law is three, four, five, or multiplies thereof, so we can go six, eight, and then 10. Make sense? And in this environment, that makes that perfectly square. So we mark off our six foot, we marked off our eight foot. Now Nate, the leading edge with the numbers, that corner goes on the outside part of that board, kind of go like that way. Nate, go like sideways. Okay. Okay, okay. now look at this. I am way out of square, all right? You can see I'm about an inch shy of square. So what I do is I grab this board and I'm gonna pull it all towards me until my pencil mark and this 10 line up somewhere around here. So, we'll try that. Set it up again. Yep. Oh, only a half an inch. One more good shot. Try that. Okay. Bam. In the box beam. Nate, take the drill and screw this joist here to the box beam on an angle over there, okay? You want to take the pencil? Like, like toe, toenail screw like that. There we go. Now this won't slide around out of position. This is guaranteed to be squared off the house. This is guaranteed to be straight off the house. So now the rest of our dimensions can be measured off this rim joist, okay? Okay, so now we're gonna measure for the rest of our deck. So we're gonna have the finished part of our deck finishing off the corner of the house. Um, so let's mark that. That'll be finished deck board. But I like to have all of my decks with a picture frame outside. So kind of like a nosing on a stair. So I'm gonna run back about another half an inch for nosing. And because I have a ramp, I also wanna have a, a skirt board. I wanna have all of the skirted up nice. So there's another half inch for that. So here it is, a little bit more just for a good measure. That's about the mark I want, right there. So whatever that turns out to be, that'll be the size of my deck. So I'm using the side of the building to determine my design instead of letting my design cause me all kinds of problems. Okay, there we go. So that's 95 and a quarter inches. Amazing. 95 and like legit. 116. All right. Wow, that's actually a rain cloud. So for more tips and tricks on how to renovate your home, make sure you subscribe to our channel at Ottawa Design and Build here on YouTube.